And welcome back, everybody, to WTL. Where's the line? I'm your host, Ian. D class and joined by Gibran. Oh, <laughs> the Parlay Pounder. You got it. We're back. Yes, we are. And we had a pretty fun, pretty exciting yeah. weekend starting last Thursday, right after the show. That was awesome. We got right into it. Uh Preakness, obviously. Preakness GPA, uh, I mean uh professional golf championship, yep. one of the majors, uh Nuggets, Lakers, uh oh, man. Heat, <laughs> Celtics. So yeah, we're in the thick of it right now, and it that was a lot of fun. Uh, one thing I wanted to go back on, Andy, because your your guy, you were talking blazing sevens. Yes, all, I was all yes, weekend was. long. You were talking about blazing sevens for the Preakness, and he was right there, yeah. six to one odds oh, when it when it came down to you know to the yep. end of, and he placed second. So he was right there. Another guy that we were talking about the entire time, which you know with a field of seven, you know you're going to say about every name, but National Treasure, yeah. with the four to one odds, took took down right. the race, and it, it was a lot of fun to see. We talked a lot about Bob Baffert, and that sure. was his horse, and that was his eighth preakness wow. that Bob Baffert was able to take down. And there was a huge shift in the odds just a couple hours before the race, yeah. and that was because first mission. My guy. Bowed out. Yep. Okay, so kind of a hit, kind of a miss there as we're, we're kind of running it down. Um, but that was such a, a crazy uh, shift there that went from eight horses to seven. Yeah. Uh, Chase to Chaos was a 50 to one. Uh, Coffee with Chris was a 20 to one. The biggest odds was only 10 to 1 for all seven. That was the worst one was 10 to 1 after first mission dropped out. So it really put the 148th Preakness kind of up on its head. And Mage came in third. He's right there, just couldn't make the kick. Didn't have the kick at the end, and everyone made a big deal about it. He was the only one, the only horse out of the seven (laughs) that ran the week before at the Derby. For sure. um, But that also leads into the Belmont. That's going to be a lot of fun June 10th. And Forte is currently your odds leader at 3-1. to Yep. Let's go back to that PGA, because I remember you saying, and a friend of the program, (laughs) uh, Jeremy Odom, J-O of Omaha at Twitter there, uh, he right away tweeted saying, you know what? I agree with Jabron on old Brooksy. Brooks Kepka. Nine under, took down the tournament, yeah. won a big major, drinking beer out of the cup there. Uh, no, it was just a lot of fun. That's how we do it on live. That's how we do it on live. That's how we do it on live, you know. <laughs> and, you know, everybody's, you know, kind of favorite going into it. Um, you know, Scotty Scheffler, oh, you know, wanted, he yeah. placed second at seven under. Yeah. The the real big outlier here, Andy, is John Rahm was the outright, mm-hmm. you know, odds favorite. And he just came out and played really bad the first day yeah. and was never able to come out of that whole yeah. ending with uh, – you know, uh, plus seven there. So that's pretty tough Ouch. for John Rom. But uh, no, that was a lot of fun watching Brooks and, uh, you know, getting one of the live guys to win one of those majors. So th- they, can, they got the monkey off their back. Now they can just, you know, you kind of stop talking about it. There you go. Uh, I, I feel like they're still going to talk a little oh, bit. Oh, for sure. But they anyway, uh, we also had, as you mentioned, NBA playoffs were yeah. rolling on. And I, I called it a, uh, WTL <clears throat> called it a tough win as they retreated, yeah. we retweeted. Wow. Uh, <laughs> Uh, your three legger, you, yeah. you nailed the three legger, but you didn't get the outcome as far as the win goes. Yeah, twice during the Western Conference Finals, I've hit a, a, <laughs> a three team LeBron uh-huh. parlay yeah. with his points, rebounds, and assists going over every time. But uh, you know, in, in Game Four there, I really thought the Lakers could do it. Uh, you know, LeBron came out, scored thirty one points in the yeah. first half, yeah. w- looked really good. But he is he is older, and it. It looked like he ran out of gas and nobody else yeah. was able to pick it up. When Anthony Davis is only scoring 17 points yeah. and Joker is just doing what he wants, yeah. that's going to be tough. So, no, uh, you know, congratulations to the Denver Nuggets, a team we've covered the entire NBA season. Yes, we and have. Um, really hope they win the championship. We've been high on Joker and company. For uh, sure. And it's probably an unfair question because you are such a uh, LeBron <laughs> Uh, fan, yeah. was that a foul the last play? Oh, for sure. That was a- Grabbing his arm. <laughs> yep. I, I know I'm going to get heat for that, but no, uh, I was watching with a couple buddies and they were just like, no, it was nothing. It was straight nothing. up. I was straight like, up. Whatever. You know, uh, it was going to be hard for him to come back from 3 0 anyway. So, yeah. uh, talking about 3 0, Andy. Oh, here we go. Do we want to get in to Heat Celtics Game 5. Let's do it. Let's do it. This is going to be a 7.30 tip-off. That's going to be yeah. on TNT. The Heat lead the <clears throat> series 3-1, to one, just the way everyone expected it to go down. <laughs> Miami won in the first two games in, in Boston. Boston. Boston coming back. And then... Uh, 
beating Miami in Miami, and it was the first time Miami was favored. When I saw that, I'm like, oh, you're jinxing them. You're jinxing them. You're jinxing the Heat. Yep. You're not just. You're not going to allow them. Even to as a one point favorite, <laughs> you can't do that. But you know, this is just kind of the way the Celtics have been. Yeah. You know, for inconsistent yeah. as the Celtics have been throughout these playoffs, they've always stepped up when they needed to win. They did so in ra- in the second round against Philadelphia 76ers, yep. bouncing back in uh, win game six in seven, yes, being in a 3-2 hole. And they did it again, like you said, last uh, you know, last game in game four, proving there was, uh, you know, you know their grit and mm-hmm. you know all that kind of stuff. So they're going to need some of that determination in Game Five because Jimmy Butler is going to be coming for their head because he does not yeah. want this to. He does not want to give them any more hope than they already have right now. You know, and the NBA is so good at this, especially during the off season of just creating drama for sure. You know what I mean? And I, I almost felt like the post game interviews. Were, were just as enthralling as the game almost. For sure. Because you had Jimmy with that stone face on, saying, we're going to do it it's the same good. way we always do good. it. Yep, yep. yep. And, and then you all had Marcus Smart. You know, you finally got a win under your belt. For and sure. Like, yeah, I told you, don't let us win don't one. Don't let us win Don't one. let us win one. Like, yeah, and and just the whole city of Boston, yeah. I, I've you know, with the Barstool <laughs> guys and all that kind of stuff, they're all just saying, this is Yankees, Red Sox again. Don't let us get one win or we're going to take the whole thing. So this... The oh, yeah. city of Boston is going to be up for Game 5 here, and I do believe the Celtics take this one out. But the line is sitting at 8 points right now, Andy. There we go. And I Come think that now. is a little inflated because Miami has already won twice in this building. Yeah, so I mean, it's the situation where I get it. I feel the momentum for yeah. Boston. I really do. And they, they did. Like you said, they sh- showed their grit, their talent, all that stuff. Yeah. Tatum poured in 33 points sure. like he always does. Yep. But you're dealing with the monster here in the heat that they're also playing with confidence jimmy butler wants to wrap things up he doesn't they're not intimidated by boston for sure not and they and they've well, already he's won, they, yeah <laughs> he's not and they've already won there uh twice and i i there i've been seeing on this talk about once again al horford throwing shade at the old guy for sure <laughs> but now they're throwing shade at kevin love and it's like Look, this dude's like 45, 46 years old. <laughs> well, he's not that old, but yeah, no, he's there to play the first 10 minutes of the game, yeah. hit two threes, come in for rebounding if they need him to be when he's rested up. So, yeah. like, and Al Horford has a little bit bigger, you know, job on the other side because right. they want him to play expanded minutes because their bigs. Yeah. Aren't as good as Miami with you know have, having Bam on their side. They need Horford, and with a, a lot of the shade from Kevin Love is like, well, he's no good on the pick and roll. He, he gets burned. Well, most of the NBA players do get burned, let alone being a tall, slow guy. <laughs> he's he's he doesn't play pick and roll. He's a corner shooter. He's a three point shooter, and he can rebound a little bit. But uh, Kyle uh, Korver made like a hundred year career out exactly, of that. Exactly, so. exactly. That's just the way it is. Like I was saying, Andy, there's no stopping Jimmy Butler this postseason, but if the Celtics can contain Miami's role players, Mm -hmm. again, they'll be in good shape. Boston should be, you know, should also get a bounce. Uh, back performance from Jalen Brown, who's oddly been quiet this year. He's only averaging 17 points a game. So with the home crowd behind him, I do believe the Celtics get the win. I do not believe they cover, though. Uh, It's going to be real close. I'm thinking 110 to 106, something like that, which would hit that under. Jabron? (laughs) <laughs> I was, no, you're not in your okay, spec. I dang. agree with you wholeheartedly on this one. It. No, I, I I think Boston can win home. I really yeah. do. Um, but there's no way that they're going to win by eight, yeah. eight and a half, nine points, whatever this line's going to get up to. Um, and you're telling me <clears> that like some of the key players here is going to be like Grant Williams. For sure. If they can limit Grant Williams coming off the bench. He had 14 points, yeah. uh, more than a couple starters did uh, in, in game four. So game five, I like Boston to win. Not cover. Yeah, for sure, Andy. And I'll give you my best bet right here. And it is a player prop for the Miami Heat. Caleb Martin has been a major problem for Boston this series, scoring at least 15 points in all four games and is averaging 18.5 points off the bench. His shot has been red hot. Uh, you know, in his his line is set at just twelve and a half points right now, Andy. So get that Ooh. over, and I got that over in my parlay. If you would like me to swing into that, all right, Mister Parlay <laughs> Pounder. I think it is that time. It well, is. Let's hear it. Okay, I got a three teamer here, Andy. Like I said, Caleb Martin over twelve and a half points. I'm throwing that Boston win just a straight money line bet in there with okay. Jason Tatum over. 30 and a half points. If they want to win this game, Jason Tatum is yeah. going to be the superstar that wins the game. Like yep. I said, Caleb Martin over 12 and a half points off the bench. Okay. Boston Celtics win. Jason Tatum.
Tatum over 30 and a half points, putting $25 on this to bring back 92. That's great value. Uh, not risking a lot to win a little bit there. Uh, all those things have to happen if Boston's going to win, exactly. and we both think Boston's going to win. So I like that parlay Woo! play from the parlay pounder. <laughs> there you go. Hey, I want to talk a little bit about our next couple of segments coming up because we got a heck of a guest, yeah. uh, Connor Hayden, Mr. Corn Crazed himself. The corn Crazed. Anybody that's on YouTube that's a Husker fan, you know this guy. Great content each yep. and every week. He also dabbles a little bit in some sports betting. For sure. Represents a platform by the name of Bro Throw. So we'll get into that. Something new, something a little different. Yeah. Um, and we're going to talk, of course, we're going to talk Huskers, futures. We're going to talk wins, over unders, totals, and for the Big Ten and Heisman hopefuls Woo! as well. Did you know Sims was up there? Mr. Sims. <laughs> of course. He's a lock. Yeah. Of He's course. a lock. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Drinking the Kool Aid. Yeah, I think he was in the contenders bracket. For sure. He had three brackets, you know, yeah, long no, shots, I, contenders, favorites. For sure. Contenders. So, yeah. Hey, but let's take a minute to recognize one of our fabulous partners, and that is the Nebraska Brewing Company. We've been drinking the Ale Storm, the official beer of Omaha's AAA baseball team. Precisely crafted with Pilsner malt and Sterling hops, making it the perfect summer baseball beer. Don't go anywhere, folks. This is WTL. 